This is The Same Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop. This is the first Pit Stop of 2021, so therefore, I'm here to wish you all a very, very happy new year. I hope you had a great holiday season, and I hope that 21, 2021 is off to a great start for all of you. We, we took the last few weeks off of the pit stop with all the holiday times. There's really not a lot of news going on. In fact, not a lot of news today in the first week of January. So I'm glad we started things off just to get 2021 underway. But at the same time, uh, a lot of the sim companies are kind of getting up to speed with news. So we'll get this show going and hopefully by next week we see a pickup in news and we'll have things back officially going for 2021. So over the season, did you get some racing in? Did you get to do any personal racing? Did you spend time with family? I did a little of both. I spent some time with family, uh, some much time off of work that I needed just to re relax, recuperate, do all that good stuff. And I got to do a lot of racing. We did some holiday fun racing over the, the couple weeks here at the Sim Pit with our community and just had a great time doing so. So what is going on in the world of Sim Racing? How are we going to kick 2021 off, in other words? Uh, let's go through the news and talk about it. Like I said, today will be a, a short show. And at the end, I do have an announcement of a few small changes we're going to be making at the Pit Stop and the Sim Pit in general. And I think it's all good things for you guys. So stay tuned to the end and I'll explain what's going on there. A lot of it is the uh, Sim Pit community racing information. We're going to split that off. I'll tell you more at the end of the show. So starting off with iRacing, uh, the 2021 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Here's our team lineup so you can know all the teams that are uh, in it. And they talk about the $330,000 prize pool that has been announced for the season. So uh, a few new teams in the mix. Uh, and I have some mixed feelings on this. I'm just going to put it out there for you guys and see what you guys have to say. Four new teams will join the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series for 2021. This is the Oval Series. And when you look at the names, uh, Clint Boyer, Denny Hamlin, Elliot Sadler, uh, Joe Gibbs, JR Motorsports, you know, these are the who's who name of NASCAR. Well, new teams being added. McLaren Esport. Not sure I feel about McLaren uh, entering their way in. And, and I wonder at this point, what is iRacing uh, doing? What is iRacing, NASCAR, and Coca-Cola what are they doing to decide what teams should be eligible or involved in this series? I mean, this is one of those uh, crossing points that we kind of foresaw, foresee, foresaw coming. Uh, when you had something that was sanctioned by the bodies and only available, I mean, think about the F1 eSport, and you have all of the real-life F1 teams. They're not going to let a Wood Brothers Racing into the F1 series. It's it's held out to the real teams of the real F1 series. So anyway, uh, here are the new teams. McLaren eSport, Elliott Sadler eSports, Space Station Gaming, which I, I've never even heard of that. What is Space space Station Gaming? I don't think they literally mean the Space Station. And Xset joined the championship for its 12th season. Uh, in addition, they're joining in time for the new prize pool. So, uh, Driver's Champion will get $100,000. The remaining $230,000 will go amongst the other participants, uh, obviously, in finishing order uh, in terms of payout. So anyway, uh, that's what we have going on at iRacing on the big Oval Series. Looking to the little Oval Series, Alex Bergeron won his fourth iRacing World of Outlaw Sprint Car Race of the season at Cedar Lake. There's a good shot of Alex crossing the line. There he is. There's two drivers from Swindell Motorsport. And looking at the, finals, or the final positions at Cedar Point, Alex Bergeron, James Eden, and Cole V. Cabra our top three finishers, and looking at the season points, this is after seven rounds. I believe, uh, is it an eight-round season? They haven't told me. For some reason, I thought it was only an eight-round. Anyway, Alex Bergeron with a 10-point lead over Hayden Cardwell with 504, so 514 to Bergeron, 504 to Cardwell, and Kendall Tucker. Kendall Tucker with 403 and third. So it's really down between Bergeron and Cardwell for the championship at this point. Looking at the iRacing main page, I just like this because I've always been a fan of the Napa liveries uh, or sponsorship. Uh, Abbott iRacer Ron Caps embraced the move to iRacing last year when America's racetracks went quiet. These virtual Napa know-how cars are sure, sure are hot. Which one is your favorite? So they're showing various different cars of Ron Caps. As a sim racer, here's a shot of Christopher Bell's little iRacing sprint car. 
Uh, by the way, anyway, uh, let's look at some of these. Here's his little rally cross car in Napa. Ron Caps. Ron Caps is late model. Ron Caps is Ferrari. And Ron Caps is a uh, big boy sprint car. Uh, I just noticed that. There's the Napa. I was going to say, that doesn't say Napa on it very much, does it? Uh, anyway, there are the paint jobs of Ron Caps. Beyond that, I think we had some posts of some various drivers. Here's the, the graphical version of our teams. Yeah, it, you know, Williams has been in there. There's no reason McLaren shouldn't be in there. It just, again, where do you draw the line? How, who's determining what teams are in? Like, like, here's my example. I don't know what, like, satellite, where's the satellite one? Um, X-Set. Is that something to do with NASCAR? Do they have a link to NASCAR in some way, shape, or form that I don't know? Um, and then, what was the other one? Satellite. Do we have, I don't see a, I don't see a thing. Anyway, but my question is, so what's going to, you know, where's VRS? You know, VRS's team isn't here. Um, in fact, I think VRS's drivers were poached and are on some of these other teams. Um, but now we're letting other teams in. I, it's, you know, they're going to have to do some cleanup work. It's new, right? Esport is new. We're, oh, here's Space Station Gaming, right in the front. Uh, but esports is still a kind of a new concept, and with it being sort of a hybrid between the professional, real-life Formula One, NASCAR, real-life teams like JR Motorsports, etc., um, should it be sim racing teams? Should it be real-life teams? Should they be a hybrid? Should they just, I don't know, should it be a qualifier into it? I don't know, but here are the teams involved in that. Uh, R Factor on the seventh. So that was just yesterday. They had their developer update competition system. I know our good friend Mitchie Hoyer has been testing out and playing with. I've heard really good things about the competition system. Um, one of the main things that makes iRacing so special is their competition system. It's a combination of the way the points are are used. It's a combination of the servers available. We'll have to see what kind of an impact the competition system has on our factor too. This has been a long time in the making, and this is such a step in the right direction. I mean, it's really one of those areas. You, you, we, we talk about and compare sims, and you can compare on physics, graphics, all these things that all the sims are comparable. And then you've got iRacing that, despite being outrageously expensive, it does have a competition system. It does have hosted racing 24-7. Uh, and that even comes back to the competition system. And that's the area where iRacing has made themselves unique, special, and to an extent, I dare say, untouchable to the rest of the sim racing companies. Uh, it's about time. I mean, one of my favorite things in the world is competition. I think competition brings even better things to us, the sim racer. So the more they compete with each other for various different parts of the sim racing market, the better they make their games to be better than their competition, the better it is for us. Same thing true for hardware. So go, go, R-Factor 2, go. Uh, let's see here. Awesome GTE cars in R-Factor 2. So it's something I didn't mention that Dove update, but the day before yesterday, they mentioned the awesome GTE cars in R-Factor 2 have received their first update of 2021. Um, so that's a read all about it kind of thing too, but yeah, they, so they've made some weight penalties, some fuel tank, uh, some power, some aero adjustments, all sorts of adjustments to, to balance out the GTE cars for 2021 in our factor too. Switching over to Codemasters and Dirt 5, uh, they are making an announcement on the 4th. Uh, all this and more is coming to Dirt 5 in future updates with exclusives for Amplified Edition players and free Content to all players, too. New cars, hundreds of new playground objects, new playgrounds, new career events, new tracks, new liveries, new livery options. Um, you can say what you want about Dirt 5. We can sit here and get into a sim versus arcade argument, but that's not what I want to talk about. I, I just got to tell you, I like when games, sims, give you free content. Um, so free content for all players. You're talking new liveries, new tracks, new career events, new playgrounds, uh, new cars. These are these are the things that keep a sim going forward. It's one of the things that make a great sim. Uh, a good sim comes out. 
a great sim gets better with time. Just like wine. Just like wine. Uh, over the holidays, uh, NASCAR Heat talked about the December DLC. I couldn't remember if we mentioned or not. So, you know, it's a little bit dated at this point. Um, but they did do with some, obviously, some paint schemes. That's normal for their DLC. Uh, Xfinity, NASCAR, Gander Truck. So, there you go. There was a little update for NASCAR Heat 5 with their DLC. Gran Turismo. Um, who's hyped to get behind the wheel of the new Jaguar Vision GTSV? I have an article on this that we're going to talk about in our show in a moment. So here, look at this extra long, talk about extra long tail. That makes the long tail McLaren look s snubby. Um, no step as though, God, can you imagine if someone stepped on that to get in the car? It's like, hello. Anyway, uh, there is the new Jaguar that is another one of these fake that almost looks like the GT PlayStation, PlayStation GT Thrustmaster wheel. Um, another one of these fake cars being added to a game. Obviously, this is not a real-life car. Here's a write-up here at Drive.com AU. Uh, Jaguar reveals the virtual 1,400-kilowatt electric supercar for Gran Turismo video game. Uh, but again, another one of these... And this is... I think to an extent, this parallel something that I've been saying for many years about sim racing. Um, and now the automotive manufacturers are finally seeing that, hey, you know what? We can actually use sims to test things. And maybe not test it one-to-one -to, -one to find out what this car really, really drives like as it's a complete fantasy car. But more the ability to test shapes looks i mean gran turismo's modeling is so fantastic that you literally could just look at the car for real more than just drawings or renderings i mean yes it's a rendering but it's like a real life moving render uh and and i think it gives them a, a, a chance to get public opinion feedback from the world on their thoughts of a concept car and i think to me a concept car can be made as a a, a plastic model that goes on a showroom floor or a trade show floor to show off what's coming and you know it's as good as it is a model but our models drive our 3d models actually drive so anyway you'll be able to try out the new jaguar um 1400 kilowatt do we have a name what are they calling this game this car uh name jaguars unveiled the vision gran turismo they're always calling them vision um no other name it looks like this is the this is a using the 2019 vision gt concept uh, the Jaguar, blah, 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 okay. Incorporating designs from the C-Type, D-Type, XJR, sure, sure, sure. You mean it looks like a Jaguar? Um, anyway, okay, there you go. You can read the article at, uh, uh, drive.com.au. All the links to everything we're talking about are in the description of the show here at YouTube. Uh, Jalopnik with an article here about how Gran Turismo 4 changed racing games forever 16 years ago. I guess what blows my mind is that Gran Turismo 4 was already 16 years ago. Wow. I guess it was, though. Um, anyway, I didn't read this article yet, but if you're looking for a good read at Jalopnik, they're talking about us, video gamers, and video games, and how Gran Turismo 4 specifically changed the world. Now, there's one company that we have not talked about in a long time. Or if we have, it was in dark light. That company is Simbin. Simbin in 2020 showed zero signs of life as far as I could tell. There was no pulse. And we could have almost called them dead. But here in 2021, there is a pulse. So on December 28th, they posted this from Simbin. Hope everyone is having a great holiday. I wish you the same thing. To help keep the festive feelings going, we're excited to announce we just launched GTR's 3's official Discord. So here's a link. Again, links are in the description of the show. Here's a link to their Discord channel if you want to go into their community, find out firsthand what's going on. Then 22 hours ago, just yesterday, posted by Simbin Studios UK. Looking for a job opportunity that allows you to display your creative flair? Or know someone that does? Check out our LinkedIn for any job openings for Simbin. We would love to hear from you. Hey, if you're in the UK, you want to work for Simbin, 
they are hiring, which is a great sign as far as signs of life. Uh, Rita, on the second, they did an update, version 1.0.1.1. This is a hot fix to complement their latest release with some further improvements and fixes to new features uh, and content. Uh, for change log and note regarding SPA DLC availability, please check here. All right, I think I have that there. I do. Uh, correction, 1.1.01. Ah, they made a little error there. And then, on the second, SPA Frankershops DLC is now available as a standalone option. Grab it here. So, Automobilista 2. Getting better and better each month. Talk about Sims that get better with time. Uh, Sims that get that kind of support that really uh, shows their community how much they love them, right? How much they love their community by supporting the game that well. Ritza Studio is one of the best when it comes to that. Spa Franker Shops now available for AMS 2. Uh, some holiday wishes from them as well. And then we have their December development update. And I got to tell you, this group... Uh, the GT1 cars. Back to the 90s with the GT1 cars. This Porsche. 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 Is one of my all-time favorite car models. Uh, the GT1 from the 90s. The 911 GT1. This was the era when cars were like flipping at Spa and Le Mans. Like just taking to the air. Dale King subscribing to the show. Thank you, Dale King. Um, anyway, uh, 90s cars are, are coming to the game, and that will be a big deal, and Spa now there as well. So, great stuff from, uh, uh Rita and AMS. Um, Race Room on the 26th, so this actually goes back to last year. No other track has been requested so often, and finally the wait is over. You can turn left and enter the Grand Prix loop at Grand's Hatch. Now, I can't imagine that Grand's, Brands Hatch was one of the most requested tracks unless you're already an established game with a huge lineup of tracks. So when you already have a great variety of tracks and you're asking for suggestions, uh, anyway, uh, it'll be great to see Brands Hatch in Race Room as well. And that's available now, and I think that's all I had from Race Room. Like I said, not a very long show today. Uh, I'm sure all of you have seen this. On the heels of the BMW wheel rim announcement from Fnatic, they have done an updated version of the McLaren GT3, and it's back and better than ever. Uh, I believe it now has, like, magnetic shifters. It has an upgraded quick release. Um, and I'm going to guess it's already sold out. <laughs> I don't know if it is or isn't. I, I think we already talked about this last year, but I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. There it is again. They mentioned it on the 29th, which is why I brought it in there, uh, into this show. Uh, our last show, I believe, was like in the week earlier, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while since we've heard anything from SimuCube. Uh, great, great wheelbases. A lot of people run the SimuCube base. Uh, but we hadn't really heard much news from them in a while. Anyway... Uh, getting to know your SimCube Partner series, launching on Tuesday, January 12th on our website and social media channels. We're excited to tell you more about our valuable network of industry professionals by introducing our official partners in more detail. Stay tuned. So we will. We will stay tuned, SimCube, and find out what you have to say about that. So good to hear from them. Okay, McLaren. Oh, I don't know what I want to... <laughs> yeah, I do know what I want to say. <laughs> anyway, McLaren. McLaren Racing and Velo are proud to launch Velo Series, an exciting new eSports series that will see celebrities race head-to-head -head against internet sensations. Series 1 kicks off this weekend with Craig David and Supercar Blondie. So if you are a Supercar Blondie fan or a Craig David fan, and you want to watch, that's going to launch on January 9th, so three days from now. 18 on this product contains nicotine and is addictive. I'm assuming Velo is... Well, that's a weird affiliation in 2021, is it not? Yeah, I find that to be a very weird affiliation. Anyway, all right. Pure Rock Crawling. Isn't that what they're called? Yeah, Pure Rock Crawling. I tried this game a while back, and I was a bit disappointed uh, it's a game in theory that I want to love, uh, but it just so far has not been able to hold a candle to uh, mud or spin tires or any of that. Great looking game. 
Anyway, there was an update, and so their winter update, they, they were good about monthly updates for a long time, which is actually one of the reasons why I was happy leaving my money with them. After I bought the game, I was disappointed. I could have returned it, to be honest with you. But they are so good about updates that I thought, nah, you know what, it'll come along. I'm going to let them sit on my money and help that be part of their development fund. Um, and then all of a sudden they went quiet, funny enough. They finally did do a new update. This was on December 21st. And it's been a while since last update, so let's just jump into what's new. First of all, the game has now new improved UI, user interface, main menu is much cleaner, blah, blah, blah. Allowing you to personalize your video, customizations, decals. That's not the kind of stuff I wanted to see. It was not the lack of decals that was hurting this game for me. Uh, about the regular update, issues with excessive suspension flex stretching is now fixed. The resulting much more. It's going to be a while, you guys, till rock crawling gets there. But I, I'm still optimistic for it in concept. Euro Truck, their post today, yesterday, was Viva la France! Viva la France! Iberia Connections. With the upcoming release of the Iberia Expansion for Euro Truck Simulator 2, we know that many drivers will be excited to progressively make their way down Europe to cross into the peninsula for the first time, with France being mainland Europe's gateway to Spain and Portugal our team is currently developing two new French locations, which will be part of a free update to the Viva La France DLC in the future. They're talking specifically about the city of Bayonne in the southwest of France. It's the capital of French Basque country, an important connection for drivers heading to Spain. Second location will be smaller community of La Lacou, uh, located in arrondissement of Pau. Anyway, uh, great to see, again, I, would, I guess one of the themes of the day has been Sims that support their titles to the point of excellence. And I think that Euro Truck, hands down, is Euro Truck AMS ETS, perhaps the best. I, I, it's hard for me to think of somebody who's better at supporting their title than them all right just a few more things to talk about like i said it's gonna we're just getting 2021 underway just getting things going um little article here little article from the drive incredible 70 i you i've saw this all over the internet by the way so the drive is just one of many 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 places but incredible 78 page evo magazine recreation uses only forza 7 horizon 4 screenshots yes even the ads in game have come a long way um this guy made a, a car magazine that you would swear was made by Road and Track, was made by any of the bigs, and looks like promotional material. Well worth checking out. You'll be kind of blown away by the talent of some people. The Thrill of Driving, Evo, Car of the Decade Edition. And uh, really cool to see the talent of so many people in the sim racing community. And oh, look at that shot. It's straight out of a brochure right there. I mean, that that's great. That's just fantastic. Anyway, link to this is in the description as well. We're going to check out a few sim rigs, talk about some sim pit business, and then bring this show to a close. Aw, cat in a box. Uh, I believe, are those cats called Blue Russian? I think that's a Blue Russian. I'm not sure. I love those cats. I think they're one of the most pretty cats there are. Anyway, look at this. Oh, my package has arrived. Obviously, he got some parts for his sim lab rig. And just like anybody, yeah. My favorite picture is somebody who gets like a cat bed or a cat clawing thing and it came in a box. So here's a picture of them at the house trying to put the cat bed down and the first thing that happens is the cat jumps in the box, not the bed. You didn't need to buy the bed, you need to buy the box. Anyway, good looking cat, has nothing to do with sim racing. This was post, oh who posted, we'll give him credit. Poster for that was Tight Yogurt. <laughs> okay, Tight Yogurt. This was posted by Gerinerd. Gerinerd with a very elaborate system here. It looks like a, a SimLab P1. Uh, oh, I forget the name of this company. Sim Racing Hardware. Uh, those are very expensive button boxes. He's got his LED flags. He's got a podium base with the really fancy looking steering wheel. That looks like a cube control steering wheel. He's got a dis touch button display. He's got a, a, a dash display. He's got curved monitors. He's got a fancy stand and microphone, uh, 
camera. Obviously, spent some money on this rig. Team Redline seat, by the way. Do you see that? Wow. Uh, this was posted by... That is an amazing rig. Posted by Jerenerd. Any words on it? Dark... Nope. Nothing to see there. Look at this. Talk about DIY. Talk about rough around the edges. This was posted by Robert Downing. Robot Downing. Used his keyboard knowledge to make a hand-wired shifter and handbrake. So, there you go. <laughs> how cool is that? I don't even know how he did it. I think that's just sitting on a keyboard and turning a keyboard into a shifter and a handbrake, if I'm not mistaken. Just motivation for you. That's just an electrical box. I just realized that's just an electrical plug box, the interior box. Wow. All right, this cracked me up today. Lopsided P. Lost an Allen key ages ago. Turns out he's been driving around with it for ages. Long live magnetic shifters. So if you're missing a tool and you haven't seen it in a long time, it might just be stuck to your paddle shifters and you don't know it. I thought that was very funny. We could all be guilty of that. <coughs> and then this. I know Joa, of all people, Joa is going to appreciate this and assume this is my rig. Uh, content mention posted this. New rig put together. Can't wait to get it set up. On a serious note, though, shout out to all the young parents out there squeezing a few laps in whenever you get a chance. Oh, that is true. If you have kids, it's sometimes hard. My buddy Ben wants to race with us all the time. But he can't because he's got a wife and kids and time is short and he gets free time, but he can't control when that comes, so he can't just make a race at a set time. Anyway, uh, I thought that was kind of cute and clever and a good way to start things off for the year. And speaking of starting things off for the year, three wide. Three wide is the talk show format show by the sim pit here with me amir Assad, and devin booth and the three of us always discuss topics usually they're things that are involved or going on in the news that take some further discussion some further opinion uh three wide has been a fun fun production for the sim pit it happens on the second saturday of every month and tomorrow is the second saturday of january and tomorrow will be the first edition of three wide for 2021 and what are we going to talk about we're going to talk about 2020. Uh, I was going to do a show on the impact of 2020 on sim racing, and a few things got in the way of that actually happening. So tomorrow, me, Devin Booth, and Amir Assad are going to talk about how 2020 impacted sim racing for all of us and perhaps how it impacted our lives in sim racing as well. So tune in right here on uh, YouTube tomorrow at 10 a.m. for 3 Wide. A uh, little cleanup business. So one thing that has always been a part of the pit stop has been the results of the various Sim Pit community racing leagues that go on. And at this point, we have a road league in iRacing. We have an oval league, uh, a paved oval in iRacing, a dirt oval in iRacing. We have a dirt rally series. We have a Mustang series. We have an Assetto Corsa Competizione series starting up. Um... A little more than we want to put into the pit stop. The pit stop is really about the news. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the Sim Pit Community Racing into a separate show. So in the future, what you're going to see is the results from all the leagues, all the community racing that we do in a separate show. And we'll keep that out of the pit stop. But today, we're still doing a little bit of cleanup and we haven't got that show up and running till next week. So looking back over the holidays, the final stage of the Sim Pit Dirt Rally League uh, happened in Carrick Finn. Won by a, a good margin, nearly a minute advantage over David Clymer with uh, Jason TFR 110 coming in third place. Uh, Alesh Mom, he has been uh, getting me the standings. You can see that's his name in red in sixth. And look all the way back to 10th place for my time. I did very so so that week. Anyway, finishing in 10th. Look at our final point standings for the season. David Clymer wins the championship. With 197 points over Randy Macho Man Savage. Finishing in second with 157. And Alesh Mom from Slovenia finishing in third with 136. And I missed a, a stage or two. So I ended up finishing in ninth place. And like I said, 
the results of this will be in that separate show moving forward and we are about to kick off a new season in the Simpit Rally League so jump into our discord type in exclamation mark discord if you'd like to join us for any of the community racing find out we have sections there to talk about all the racing going on so just uh, head into our discord channel and you can join us and be part of these results uh, there's a video at Billy Strange Racing so I'm going to promote Billy Strange Racing on YouTube, good friend of the show, good friend of mine, Billy Strange and I joined forces to host a Tuesday Night Thunder Sprint Car Series, and that got underway a couple of races ago, so we just finished the second race of the season at Eldora, and that was just uh, on Tuesday night. Anyway, here's a little recap video at Billy Strange Racing, and you can go check that out if you want. And you can show, see we finished USA and Eldora next week. We're at Cedar Lake. And looking at the points, Tyson Landis is winning right now with 280 points. Brandon Skinner uh, is second in the points with 264. And Billy Strange is third with 255 points. Uh, last week at Eldora, we'll look at our finishing results. I meant to have that at the ready and don't, but... Here we go. Uh, last week, Justin Sherman won the race. Billy Strange in second. And David Clymer in third. Season points leader Tyson Landis finishing in fourth. And in my first race of the season, I finished seventh. I missed the first race. Uh, it was actually literally my brother's birthday. Um, also, just want to mention it real quick because it's other things that we have going on. So we have three wide tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow, immediately following that, we're going to have a practice race. This is the Simpit patron page. This is uh, patron.com. This is a group that support the Simpit show, the group over at the patron. Each month, we have a patron appreciation race where I give away a trophy and a t-shirt to one lucky race winner and random drawing winner. If you want information on that, just check out patron.com forward slash the Simpit. Um, but tomorrow we'll do our practice race. We're going to be running the Radicals at Long Beach. And then next Saturday at 10 a.m. will be the official trophy race. So all those members have been given notice on that. Uh, but tomorrow at 11, I will have uh, the practice race, which I get to run in. So tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., 3 wide, wide on YouTube. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. on Simpit Live at Twitch will be our Radicals at Long Beach race. And then... Tonight, we have our ARCA kickoff. So tonight, we kick off the ARCA series. This is the, uh, gosh, like the sixth season of the Simpit Oval series. And we're going to be at Nashville tonight. That'll be at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock my time, Pacific time, all these times I'm giving you. 5 o'clock tonight, we're going to be at Nashville in the ARCA car, Simpit Live on Twitch. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., 3 wide right here on YouTube. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., on Simpit Live at Twitch, we're going to have the uh, practice race for the Simpit patron, Radicals at Laguna. And then Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we kick off our Simpit GTE League at Road Atlanta. And that should be a very exciting. So all of our seasons are kicking off right now, getting underway. And that's why in the future, next week, by next week, I won't be talking about this during the pit stop. We're going to have a special show with all the Simpit community racing results. That's going to do it for this one. Again, I want to wish you all a very, very happy 2021. I also want to thank you. I want to thank you all for an amazing 2020. The Simpit had a great year in 2020, and it was a rough year out there in the world. It was a rough year for me personally, but the Simpit really found its way this year. The Simpit found its community. We found our path on the kind of content and the way we want to provide content. We've got new cast members. We've got new help behind the scenes, and I think you're going to see 2021 really be the best year yet from the Simpit. So I thank you all for that, and I'm wishing you all the very best for 2021, but that, that's going to do it for this one. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.